The Friedel-Crafts acylation reaction is similar conceptually to the Friedel-Crafts alkylation reaction in that we're using a carbon-based electrophile and establishing a carbon-carbon bond. However, the key difference here is that the electrophile is no longer just a simple carbocation. It's a resonance-stabilized cation in which positive charge is shared by oxygen and carbon. This reaction installs what's called an acyl group, which is a carbonyl group, CO double bond, linked to some carbon group, and this may be an alkyl group, alkene, or even another aromatic. This reaction has some big synthetic advantages over alkylation, and we'll see at the end of this video that it's highly useful in synthesis, especially when we want a primary alkyl carbon to end up here. Friedel-Crafts acylation is an electrophilic aromatic substitution reaction, and as we've seen in all of these reactions, the mechanism of generation of the active electrophile and the nature of the active electrophile is key. In Friedel-Crafts acylation, the active electrophile is a resonance-stabilized cation called an acylium ion, with a general structure like this, with an R group connected to a cationic carbon sharing positive charge with an oxygen doubly bound to it. We can draw a resonance structure of this ion by pushing the lone pair on oxygen into a new bond between carbon and oxygen that shows that the positive charge is delocalized over both carbon and oxygen. This resonance stabilization turns out to be key. Not only does it make the cation more stable than a typical carbocation, but it also avoids rearrangements since this is already a relatively stable cation. The avoidance of rearrangements is a big synthetic advantage of Friedel-Crafts acylation as we'll see a little bit later. How exactly do we generate the acylium ion? Well, in principle, if we start with this molecule and treat it with AlCl3, all we need to do is pull off chloride to generate an acylium ion, and this is essentially what happens. It's worth mentioning briefly this substrate here, as we haven't really seen a functional group of this type just yet. It's referred to as an acid or an acyl chloride. Acyl, because it contains an acyl group, that's a carbonyl group connected to some carbon group R, and chloride because of the chlorine atom attached to the carbonyl carbon. Acyl chlorides can be synthesized from carboxylic acids using the reagent thionyl chloride, SOCl2. In addition to the acyl chloride product, this reaction produces SO2 as well as HCl. Let's look in detail now at how the acyl chloride is converted into an acylium ion through the action of AlCl3. If you picked up on the general pattern in halogenation and Friedel-Crafts alkylation, the mechanism here should look quite familiar. The first step is again the formation of a Lewis acid-Lewis base complex between the AlCl3 promoter and the acyl chloride. The chlorine atom has lone pairs, one of which can coordinate to the aluminum center. We see the acyl chloride acting as a Lewis base and the aluminum trichloride acting as a Lewis acid in this process. Although chloride is certainly not the most Lewis basic atom within this molecule, it's the only one for which coordination leads to a productive forward process. Put another way, although the amount of this complex that forms is relatively small, it's a highly reactive complex that proceeds rapidly to the next step. We previously identified this AlCl4 fragment as a good leaving group within this structure because of the positively charged chlorine atom. And to generate the final active electrophile, the acylium ion, an elimination process takes place in which this group acts as a leaving group. Electron flow begins at one of the lone pairs on the oxygen atom. Through N to sigma star type electron flow, the carbon-chlorine bond breaks, and we end up with positive charge on the oxygen atom. The resonance structure thus generated has a triple bond between carbon and oxygen, and positive charge on the oxygen atom. The way we've shown it, this amounts to a beta elimination step, but of course, this arrow coming down from the oxygen atom is sort of optional, Leaving that out would result in the other resonance form of the acylium ion. From here, the mechanism is classic electrophilic aromatic substitution. The benzene ring coordinates to the electrophilic carbon in the acylium ion in an A sub E or ADN step, depending on which resonance structure of the acylium ion we actually draw. This leads to the formation of a now very familiar sigma complex in which the key carbon-carbon bond has formed. There's now an sp3 hybridized carbon in the structure, and the structure is positively charged. To restore aromaticity, a Lewis base removes this extremely acidic proton from the intermediate. And in this case, just as in halogenations and in Friedel-Crafts alkylation, the AlCl4- anion is a great candidate. Proton transfer to chlorine leads to the re-establishment of aromaticity as well as the production of HCl and AlCl3. 
Overall, the Friedel-Crafts acylation process is very similar to Friedel-Crafts alkylation, but because it involves an acylium ion rather than a plain vanilla carbocation, acylation reactions are free of rearrangements. The nice thing about this is that we can, in theory, with one extra step, gain access to primary alkyl benzenes that would rearrange in Friedel-Crafts alkylation reactions using Friedel-Crafts acylation. And the idea is the following. Imagine we started with an acyl chloride like this and use Friedel-Crafts acylation to attach that electrophile to an aromatic ring. If we could somehow reduce the carbonyl group through reaction conditions that replace the two bonds to oxygen with two bonds to hydrogen, we've accomplished in two steps what Friedel-Crafts alkylation was unable to do in one step. If we tried alkylation here, instead of getting the expected linear alkyl chain product, we would end up with a branched product that's the result of rearrangement and bond formation here instead of at the end position. And so alkylation won't work here, but this two-step acylation followed by reduction will work fine. The key really is just figuring out what reduction conditions can actually lead to this transformation of the carbonyl group into a CH2 group. One of the key things to notice is that after the carbonyl group has been incorporated into the product, it's located at a benzylic position. And so what we really need are reactions that engage in reduction selectively at benzylic positions, or at the very least have a propensity to occur at benzylic positions. I call these benzylic reductions. There are two of them, and we'll look at them in detail in the next video. They are the Wolf-Kishner reduction, which involves strongly basic conditions, multiple equivalents of strong base, and the Clemenson reduction, which conversely involves the use of strongly acidic conditions. These two complementary methods were developed for substrates that are either sensitive to acid, in which case we have to use base, or sensitive to base, in which case we need to use acid. We'll see these in more detail in the next video.